Hello, everyone. My name is Ray. And I'm Chrissy. And we are, I'm not sure if this is working, but um, we, I can, you just hold it up. Just hold it up. Okay, perfect. We are the co-founders of Soul Much. Um, Soul Much is a social venture that started because we were working in a corporation and we saw a massive problem. We came up with an innovative solution and we presented it to our management team, but they just brushed us off. So instead, we decided to build a company out of it. We essentially were the idea that got away. So what exactly is it that we do? Um, we have found a solution that takes all of the excess grains and food from restaurants that they oversupply on that would have been turned into food waste, but instead we repurpose it into healthy snacks such as cookies. Um, <laughs> woo! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so this whole thing got started because her and I both worked at a restaurant where we noticed firsthand pounds and pounds of food being wasted every single night. And just to clarify, this is not the scraps on people's plates, nor is this anybody's <laughs> leftover food. This was completely unserved grain straight out of a rice cooker that they had just oversupplied on, that they were throwing away. So on average, our restaurant was wasting up to 30 to 40 pounds of brown rice and quinoa, nutritious grain, every single night. And then we did some math, we figured out annually that's about 47,000 pounds of food. We soon realized that this problem had scaled way beyond just our restaurant. Other restaurants were having the same problem, and we could no longer turn a blind eye to this, and we had to do something about it. And so we did. So our first idea, we went to the drawing board, and we thought, OK, hey, so simple. Why don't we just take all of this excess food and give it to the people that need it the most? Let's partner up with a local food bank or a shelter and create a system in which we can do that. Well, I'm, as you can imagine, I'm sure our management had quickly shot that idea down. It was too much work, they didn't want to be liable, yada, yada. So we went back to the drawing board, we thought of a second idea. Why don't we take all of the food, and it's the wet grain, and repurpose it into a flour and use that flour? Because the restaurant that we were working at actually buys rice flour as a staple ingredient in many of the food items on the menu. So why don't they just repurpose it and use their own? Well, the management thought that that was too much work. So they turned that one down as well. So at this point, her and I started to feel a bit defeated, but we were not willing to give up just yet. We said, hey, if they're not going to take this idea and do anything with it, we will. We're going to run with it. And so we did. So currently now, we take all of the excess grains, we dehydrate them, we grind them up and put them in a milling machine and make this really fine flour. And with that flour, we're really flexible on what we can do with it. We can sell the flour, we can make a different array of products. Currently, right now, we are selling cookies. Um, this is kind of like a little, we pick up, we dehydrate, we grind, and then we bake. Um, and now I know this is gonna sound crazy. As I had mentioned before, the restaurants use rice flour as a staple ingredient in their recipe. We wanna be, we've opened up communication channels, and we are planning to sell back this flour that we got from the restaurants <laughs> to the restaurants. <laughs> This was an idea that we once presented to them, but they had turned down. <laughs> so like Ray had said, the beginning of 2017, we had already had our idea shot down by the restaurants. So starting our uh, company out of San Diego State, we applied to an incubator on campus to actually turn this idea to a reality. We started working on customer research, uh, market re uh, segments, and knew we needed funding to actually make this idea a reality. So with all this excitement and all the work we were doing, we told anybody and everybody that would listen to us, including a fellow student of mine in my economics class. She happened to see on the Blackboard, that, uh, Blackboard platform we use for grading, that the CEC had had their first um, ever How Green Is Your Dream Youth Innovation Challenge. So we immediately saw that as the second objective on their um, challenge was how to reduce and divert food waste. We knew this was a challenge we could not pass up and we immediately looked further more into. Even from the beginning, we knew exactly what we needed to do, when we needed to do it, and where we were going to be doing it. The CEC provided clear information that really told us what kind of requirements and obligations they needed from us. We um, immediately applied to IdeaScale, um, created our uh, platform, and the first phase of our competition was to do a um, quick abstract as well as a photo. See, on this idea scale, this was our first ever challenge and first time actually seeing a um, shared idea platform. So we uploaded our idea as well as our photo, 
and got to immediately see there was plenty of other people submitting their ideas <coughs> in food waste as well as all the other objectives they were looking to meet. So the CEC is a government organization that is a North American um, entity that protects our environment. They wanted to engage um, youth innovators from Mexico, Canada, and the US to actually implement problems that they were facing. So with the idea sharing, we got to uh, firsthand see what other innovators were doing, and it kept us engaged. Not only were we bouncing ideas and giving feedback, we were also checking in week after week to see who was doing stuff in the food space as well as biofuels. We were happy to say we were launched into the second phase of the um, challenge at the end of the spring semester. As the, one of the semi-finalists, this is where the real work began. So the first phase, we just had to do a quick overview, a photo, and really engage into the platform. As one of nine semi-finalists, we, um, uh, we were given two weeks to do a detailed project description, including a budget, <laughs> thank you, um, and uh, our budget and also our partnerships. This was all to create a full business case. See, this phase was really what helped us launch our company. We had done market research, we had gotten our thoughts together, but we weren't in the phase of our organization to actually have a detailed business plan. And the CEC pretty much forced us to do that, to move into the next phase. See, here we were able to actually see what we needed to do and create our roadmap to actually know what the cost point of each phase was. We're happy to say, at the end, uh, beginning of the summer, we were selected as US finalists for the CEC's Youth Innovation Challenge. Here we were able to go and meet our other teams that we had collaborated with amongst um, this whole journey. Uh, not only were we able to present our winning idea, we also got to meet um, environmental leaders who were gonna be able to make us make these connections to a launch our idea. Um, with that $4,000 seed funding, we were finally able to actually do the implemented steps that they had already had us created. Cool. So since then, since the CEC challenge and using Idea Scale, we've been competing in a ton of other competitions. We've um, been using a ton of other platforms as well, and we're here to share some of the goods and some of the bads with the other platforms. So something that was really good that we've noticed um, in the other competitions was the ability to search and use keywords or hashtags to find other companies in the same space. So we're in the food waste space, so it's really nice we can just hashtag food waste or type food justice and we can see other companies that are doing something similar. Um, and that was something that we saw with Ideascale, which was really cool. Um, something else that we thought was great was just being able to see other people's ideas. It really allowed us to think we're not the only crazies out there <laughs> trying to do something innovative like this. Um, and something also really good with Ideascale, or at least how CEC utilized this feature was what they did was almost a filtration system. So we've competed in so many, probably over 30 competitions. We've poured our heart and souls into these applications. We didn't get into all of them, and that's really time consuming, but what was really cool about how they utilized this feature was you would put in a certain amount of information. If you made it to the next phase, then they would ask for more information, as she said, a budget and finances and whatnot. So um, kind of just spaced our time a little bit better. And to draw back to Solmich and what we're doing in our company, um, some major milestones with us is we are a San Diego-based company, so we're selling at local San Diego farmers markets. We've just, it's been one year since we launched our company. Um, in just less than a year, we've been selling at markets and generated like $57,000 in revenue sales. It's a pretty good start for us. We're so <laughs> um, Thank you. And we know it's just the beginning, but we're now feeling comfortable to tap into the retail space. And we are currently selling at seven retail locations, but hopefully by the end of this year, we plan to be in 25. Um, again, no, that's just a stepping stone, but it's one step closer. Um, and then what's so beautiful about this business model is that we're working with some of the largest chain restaurants in the world. So P.F. Chang's, True Food Kitchen, BJ's, Payway, Starbucks. So what this means is that we will always have a consistent supply we can scale this to every major metropolitan city, and we can track where everything is coming from. But perhaps what our most proud accomplishment is so far is that in less than one year, we have rescued over 6,000 pounds of food that would have been going into a landfill, but instead in the form of flour or cookies. And that is just the beginning. So we hope to leave you guys here feeling inspired that yes, sometimes the best ideas can come from the bottom up and our mission is to inspire others that working on environmental issues does not need to be so complex. Sometimes the best solutions are the simplest ones. Thank you so much.
Mark O'Connor, Los Angeles World Airports. Um, have you ever thought about it tapping the airports as an entity to be able to actually get a large source from of waste, food waste, because that would be a great way to do it as well, as opposed to yes. just the chains. Yeah. So I'm offering that as a let's talk. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, have restaurants asking to partner up with us. Um, we are still semi-small scale, but we have just another big accomplishment. As of last week, we just signed a lease for our own kitchen space, so we can now triple it, our production and whatnot. So um, we do have a GoFundMe account, plugging that out there, <laughs> um, so that we can get larger equipment to be able to work with bigger entities, such as bigger restaurants. We also work with major food concessions, like Westfield. Oh, um, cool. Uh, Marriott Post, wow. Delaware North, those would be logical entry points yeah. to coming from the airports because that's the, who supplies food for a lot mm -hmm. of major venues. We will keep in touch, we will. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Delaware, Delaware North actually has an environmental mentorship program and a whole food sustainability division. So, I mean, that, that's our logical entry cool. point. For yeah, definitely. So that's. She studied sustainability, I studied food science nutrition, so we birthed this child <laughs> together. So, uh huh. Thank you. Could you take us through the conversation you had when you walked back into your original business? <laughs> <laughs> what, what did that look like? Um, which we've had so many pivots. So, <laughs> well, like, you, you left your original company, right? And then you are selling flour back to them. Right? Yes. So you had to walk back in, so they get very good to reject you and say, hey, now I got a better idea. I guess I'm gonna sell you. Yeah, so, so luckily it, it started out at a restaurant that we were really familiar with. We're like a good relationships with all the general managers. We just pretty much demanded a meeting with the corporate chefs from that restaurant. Like, look, you guys are buying your, f we did all the research that we could. I, we were so, you know what any business person would do. And we figured out how much they were paying per pound, how much they were ordering per week. We said, we can provide you a better price point than what you're paying for. And it's an upcycled ingredient. We basically did not allow them to say no. There was no reason <laughs> they would say no. So, uh, give, yeah. I just want to commend you both. I think this Thank is you. incredible uh, that you've been able to do this. And it's so fun. To, I don't have a question, really. So. <laughs> you, can keep, you can keep flattering us all day. We don't mind. <laughs> within our or own organization, because right now I'm so in the small scale of it all. Yeah, um, definitely, so our whole thing is, uh, so we have, our product line right now is cookies as well as flour, and all of our cookie, all of our flavors are inspired by what's wasted. So we have a carrot cake, which is out of carrot pulp and beet. So we see a lot of places when we expand to just outside of the two of us, um, to definitely have different ways of seeing what can be repurposed. So I can easily see some sort of share, like crowd sharing platform where we can really collect all those ideas. Um, so amongst the two of us, it's easy to manage, but I know when you get to <laughs> large organizations. Uh, so I know that's one day um, going to be a phase we'll be at. So I could definitely see us implementing, like how do you, how do you keep staying innovative? Because that's where we created out of is being innovative, so. And then we brought, we didn't just tease you, we brought samples. <laughs> Luckily they got some. <laughs> So um, there's, they're all just, if, if there's any nut allergies, they are, have almonds in them, but um, they're all vegan, gluten-free, and they're all different flavors depending on food that is upcycled. So there's, as she had mentioned, juice pulp, so we also take the juice pulp. We partner with Starbucks, take their coffee grinds, there's a chocolate espresso cookie, um, but they're all based with that flour, so. One other question? One more question? Yeah. How did you, uh, did you have experience in preparing business plans? So, this is funny. So, no. Um, <laughs> not at all. So, we, I like to say, so we applied to an incubator on campus, and I like to say that they adopted us like startup virgins, because we had like no idea what we were doing. 
Um, but they were the ones who introduced the lean business model and like build and test, build and test. And so that's why we started at farmers markets to really get like one-on-one -on -one feedback to fine tune our MVP. Um, so no, we didn't. But now we're learning. <laughs> a lot of podcasts. And the like based off of the CEC, like that second phase um, really helped us create yeah. that. That's where our first business plan was ever created. And that's where like even when we met the Minister of Environment from Canada, I told her, I was like, without this, like we were doing the building and testing, building and testing, but to actually sit down and have a detailed requirements. And this is what they used to judge who was going to be their finalist out of innovation, scalability. Um, and so we were able to show a fully detailed project to them in the form of a business plan. So, great, thank you. Ladies. Thank you. Yeah.